Hi there, this is Underwear Guy, and for this video in the UPS Deliveryman series, I'm going to talk about how you get that signature UPS logo to apply to whatever shirt you're wearing as the base. I was lucky at the time when I put this first outfit together that I could find Under Armour was still selling a brown spandex t-shirt. They aren't anymore based on my research, at least in the short term. There's a mock neck long sleeve shirt I was able to find, but not in a short sleeve. But there were more than a couple other options I was able to link on my buying guide on mensunderwearguy.com, so you can check those out. Once you have your shirt, you're going to, going to want to figure out how you can get this logo on it. Now, in a simple way, you could just print the UPS logo on a photo paper or any other kind of paper and just use some strong adhesive. The challenge about that is that the fabric is going to move with your body, especially if you decide to go with what I did, which was a more skin tight version, and it's going to crinkle and get kind of messed up because it's paper and it doesn't really fold well. You can't really solve for the stretch part. Um, you kind of have to fit in an area of your shirt that's not going to be stretching apart much once you've assembled it and put your outfit together and that tends to work really well because the chest area of any shirt isn't necessarily going to be stretched a huge amount unlike maybe uh, near the side of the shirt or near the upper shoulders. In order to get something that actually works and flexes with the fabric that you're wearing, an option that I researched and found out worked really well was going with inkjet fabric sheets. And this is from Jacquard, that's the brand. And these are really cool. They're literally sheets of cotton that are bonded to a kind of paper that can be fed through your inkjet printer. And if you take the PDF file that I created, and you can get your own UPS logo, it's not hard to find them, you can feed this through any normal inkjet printer. I use the plain paper setting because that gives it a little more ink to actually soak into the fabric. And the resolution is really good. You can see this is very sharp certainly passes the test for whatever you want for a Halloween costume. And I made these logos intentionally really oversized. It may be a little cartoonish, but that's the whole point of a good costume, is it's meant to inherit some of the general look and feel, but you're, you're making your own interpretation and you're trying to take whatever elements are really going to make it clear for whoever's looking at you that they know immediately what you're supposed to be. And so oversizing the logo is an easy trick to be able to do that. The great advantage of using fabric is that it's not going to get an immediate crease just because it had to bend or fold while you were wearing it. As you can see with the version on here, it, it can be crunched together and it folds just like regular fabric. What happens is you peel off, once you've finished printing, you peel off from the back this paper and the cotton will separate like that. Now this, this is not a sticky backed fabric. This doesn't remain tacky afterwards. So once you've got this off, you then have literally just a printed sheet of fabric. And it does have just a hint of stretch, not much, but that's still any, any little bit of give that you have is always great. You can see on the back, the ink doesn't soak all the way through to the, to the other side. It stays on the surface, which is good because you want that solid color. A couple of challenges that you have with this route. Number one, you still got to get it onto your shirt, as well as the fact that it's going to be uh, a little bit transparent. So you, you got to figure out how you're going to do that when you have something like foam dots, which is what I used. This was just because my costume was super simple. I didn't need it to last too long, but I found that using these adhesive foam dots was kind of a good quick fix. I'm not sure how well this would work over the long term. You might need something stronger and more permanent, like a double sided kind of glue adhesive, not literally glue, but an adhesive that can bond the fabric to the shirt a little bit more permanently. The way I would do it is cut out lots of small pieces and strategically place it in important parts of the logo and then press that down. You don't want to just cut out a whole sheet because that whole section then of the shirt will completely not move and you want a little bit of flexibility. You can see here I just ended up placing over the Under Armour logo, that was a nice way to cover that up, these foam dots. And to be honest, this did stay on. If I had used just a few more, then I wouldn't have to deal with the edges curling up. Again, for just a, a quick costume, it worked well. The dots are showing through in the lighter color, so you might want to think about how you could either more evenly apply the dots, or you might need to maybe double up the fabric in some way to get it to make sure it's more opaque before you have the dots going on behind it. 
basically I'm giving you some general ideas and then you can help kind of figure it out on your own how this is going to come together for you. If you happen to be using something like a cotton t-shirt or any other kind of shirt that can be ironed, you have one other option besides adhering it and attaching it to the shirt the way I've done here. And that's using these Quick Fuse inkjet fabric sheets. Again, similar to the cotton ones, you can run them through any normal inkjet. The big difference though, and here you can see it's just a normal sheet of paper, but you'll notice this side is shiny. That's because this has a sort of fusing glue on it that will react with heat. Again, only on shirts that aren't going to melt, like this spandex shirt would melt with heat being applied to it, so that would be a bad idea. But if you happen to be using like a cotton t-shirt, you can definitely print on this and then fuse that down to the surface after you've cut out the logo and you'll have a really permanent option for the UPS symbol. So that's a, another uh, idea in terms of how to transfer this logo onto your shirt. If you guys have any other ideas, please let me know. This is always kind of an interesting process to, of trial and error to figure out what works and what doesn't work. And I'd be curious to know if you've had any luck doing some other techniques. Until later, this is Underwear Guy signing off, and I hope you have fun underwear shopping.